Okay, so today we're going to be doing my top 10 horror list. So, I don't read a ton of horror. I'm definitely not the go-to person for advice on where to pick up horror books, but every time we're in this spooky season that we're coming up to, I love focusing on spooky books. So I have some books that I have really, really enjoyed over the years that I definitely can recommend. I have at the beginning of this list, the first five, I believe, are going to be like proper, spooky, creepy, unsettling books. And then the next five will be more low key if you're easily spooked and want something a little bit more chill. That's what the second half of the list is. And then I'm gonna end this list on, I think five, again, uh, books that are on my TBR for this October. So if you're looking for something to read, these are 10 books that I have loved and definitely recommend. And then I think five, I should have been more organized, but I'm not starting over, that I plan to read. It's 15 books probably for you to look at check out. We're going to start with one that I have, oh my goodness, talked about so much since I since I first read it, and that's Pet Cemetery by Stephen King. I love this book so much. Oh, maybe this should be in the low-key spooky section. I think it's fine. It can be on the, it's fine. So this is a book that I have talked about so much since I first read it, and because I loved it so much, and a lot of people have read it and come back and said that they loved it too. A lot of people have read it and come back and said it's not even scary until the end, but I think the ending does deliver. So it's, it's fine. But that's probably a pattern that you'll see on my list. I don't get scared easily in books, so I'm not going... I'll never recommend a book that scares me. I'll recommend books that make me feel unsettled, because that's really the feeling that I go for with my spooky scary books. I want something that's going to get into my head. I want something that's going to make the mundane look scary, not like bloody horror kind of things. I want something that's going to make my day-to-day -day life, it's gonna make me question things in my day-to-day -day life and get me back in that novel in like a very quiet, unsettling way. That's what this list is gonna be because that's what I go for in my books. So anyway, um, this is a story about grief more than it is anything else and King really used horror as a tool to explore grief. So the concept of this so story is our main character moves to a new location and just over the hill, I think it was, um, there's a pet cemetery that the the locals um, have created where if they bury a pet there, well, the idea, the concept, the, the rumor is that if you bury a pet there, it'll come back to life, but it won't come back right. So the story starts off with low stakes. They have a cat that gets buried there and it doesn't come back right. And then we kind of keep upping upping the stakes and and the level of grief that we're experiencing, the, the things that we're losing are just escalating. And them coming back wrong is escalating too. And it's just a very uncomfortable book, but it also is a book that talks about grief and talks about um, processing all of that as well. It's really good. I love books about grief, so it got me, but then also those unsettling parts got me too. This is very good. I'll try to pick it up a little. Next book in the more unsettling, more creepy, more yikes uh, category is, is another one that I've recommended a lot and people generally come back to me unhappy with it and that's The Troop. Um, yeah, so this is a story about a group of Boy Scouts that get stranded on an island. And on this island, there are these worms. And if you get a cut in your body, if you get any sort of, if your body, if, if there's any sort of exposure, like a cut, then those worms can and will get inside of your body. And they will eat and eat and eat and multiply and multiply and multiply until you're essentially taken over. You get this insatiable hunger that takes over your very being and you will turn on, on people uh, to get to them, to kill them, to eat them. So it's like, it's this parasite um, that that so so what I enjoyed about this, there's a lot of stuff in this book that's really twisted and messed up and terrible and a lot of very disturbing scenes. It's definitely body horror. But what I loved about the book is I 
<laughs> it's just the, the tension of one, what are we gonna do? We're this group of Boy Scouts that are loyal to each other, that love each other, we're a bunch of kids, and there's one adult, and um, you know, we wanna take care of each other, but what do we do when one of us gets into a fight with another and has bloody knuckles? What do we do when one of us is potentially infected or will very likely become infected soon? What do we do then? What do we do when one of our, our people is probably infected, but isn't to the point of being violent yet. And that whole dynamic among them was fascinating to me. There are, I think, three scenes of animal brutality that are pretty rough, so know that going in, but um, I just skimmed those. And the meat of the story, the main thing that the story was doing, I don't know, I just, I really, it, I, it got me. I liked it. Um, <laughs> next up, more weird stuff. Am I just really into weird stuff? Uzumaki. Um, so this, Uzumaki, it, this is a manga. Um, this is a story, it's also body horror. It's, uh, it's about this town that has been infected by spirals. So that sounds weird, but the it starts off very minor and just kind of escalates. So basically there are these spirals um, in the town and, you, and you'll find that there are spirals everywhere. It could be, you could see a spiral in the, in the pattern of, you know, a snail shell or um, in a piece of pottery, there's, there's a spiral that, that is there. Or it can escalate to the point of like, there's a spiral in your inner ear and if you see an anatomy chart, you know, and so the idea is if you see a spiral, then you kind of get trapped, your mind gets trapped in the spiral and you go insane, you like, you lose it and <laughs> it's just weird. It's just a weird story, man. But it's a collection, it reads like a collection of short stories and it, it, and it goes all around this town seeing the different ways that spirals are affecting the people in the town. But there's also this added element that if you try to leave town, then you kind of, you get stuck in the spiral and it brings you back. <laughs> And so it's like it's this collection of people all around town that are being affected by the spirals in different ways. Some ways are really, really cool. And then there's there's also these main characters that are consistently coming up. And when all the stories kind of come together at the end and it turns into not a collection of short stories, but a cohesive story that comes together. Um, I also read Tomie. It's on my shelves by uh, Junji Ito, and I considered putting it on the list, but for for me, that one was a really interesting story, but it didn't unsettle me like Uzumaki did, and I didn't expect Uzumaki to unsettle me because it's, it's spirals, but there are spirals everywhere. And I started taking note of how common they were, and that's what I want. That's what I want. Speaking of that kind of effect, another book that did this to me that I loved, uh, more of a traditional horror, is uh, The Haunting of Hill House. So again, the kind of books that I tend to like are the very slow paced, uh, slow escalation, and that's definitely what this is. So this is a story about a group of people that got called to this house. Um, gosh, I'm trying to remember the setup exactly. I think somebody died maybe, and then all these people got called here, none of them really knew exactly why they were being brought in or how they were all connected, but it doesn't matter. It's this house that uh, is believed to be haunted and the town, uh, everybody in town, if you interact with someone in town, then they are like, they're aware that that house is wrong. Um, and, and so these people are staying at this house and uh, wanting to understand it or wanting to figure out why they're supposed to be here. And so the thing that I loved about this house is that it started very small with what was uncomfortable. Stuff like the doors aren't hung right, so they slam shut for no reason, or the walls of the house aren't measured correctly. They, they're not right, so the shadows are too long or something like that. Like something that's like, this is just slightly off. This is just slightly wrong, but there's logical reasons. Like we can rationalize why everything in this house is just a little bit wrong. Um, so like these day-to-day -day things that something just kind of feels off to you in the book, 
it makes you believe, oh, there's a reason for that. Don't, don't ignore that. Don't push that feeling down because then it escalates and escalates and escalates. And by the end of the, the book, we have like a proper haunting happening, but it begins with day-to-day -day things that could just get in your head and just make you feel a little bit uncomfortable. And Shirley Jackson is amazing at just that feeling of unsettling, describing normal day-to-day -day things, describing things in the right way so that it feels just the right amount of wrong. And I love, I love her writing for that. So I felt very just through, I was very, even though it's a slow paced book, I was completely captured by it and so needing <laughs> to keep going and so uncomfortable for just day to day life that was slightly wrong. Uh, next book on this list is Edgar Allan Poe. I've read a lot of his poems and short stories, not recently, it was a couple years ago, but he also does really well at that feeling of just feeling very uncomfortable. I remember the pendulum was one of those where he, it's just this man in a room and there's a pendulum and, and just that feeling of, that feeling of spiraling thoughts is something that Poe does really well, where you're in a situation and then the character that you're in the head of is is thinking too much and spiraling. And that's definitely, spiraling thoughts is something that I struggle with sometimes. Uh, and so Poe takes that and he just takes it to the next level. And he handles that feeling of suspense so well. I find a lot of his short stories, a lot of his poems to feel a little bit unsatisfying in the end. Some of them have great endings, but some of them feel not, it's not the ending that I read for, it's that feeling of unsettled that he captures so, so well, and I really enjoy. Next up we have the Gilda stories, which is something that I read before I even created this channel, which I think this channel is like six years old or five and a half. It's somewhere around there. So I read this one a long time ago, but this follows a woman, a slave woman who is escaped from the cotton fields and encounters a vampire and ends up turning. And it's her story as a vampire. And again, I read this a long time ago, so the lo a lot of the details have kind of faded in my mind, but I remember really liking this one for a couple of reasons. One, I don't typically jive with vampire stories. I've read a few and I just, I just don't think that they're my thing, but this one didn't do very much of what we're used to seeing in vampire stories. It asked a lot of questions. It, it put her in situations that made me at least think in a really different way than most vampire stories. It asked different kinds of questions than what are typical to, to ask. And it took her through so many different life experiences as well throughout this story. Again, it was very slow, but I just remember being really, really captured by it. And there weren't a lot of scenes that were, oh my goodness, terrifying so much, but it made me think a lot. And there were a lot of, there were a lot of very unsettling, uncomfortable scenes like vampire stories tend to be. Next up, we're in the more chill section of this list now. I have uh, House of Salt and Sorrow, which is a YA book. And um, this book is about a girl who has 12 sisters, I think, and they're being killed off one by one. And a lot of people think that there's a curse on this family. Some of the sisters don't believe in the curse, but they are dying. Um, some are being killed off, some are just dying of other causes. Uh, but our main character is trying to figure out, she feels really confident that the most recent death was targeted. It was not an accident like everybody thinks it was. And so she's trying to solve that mystery, but at the same time, there's some really, really, really twisted stuff happening in her household, like hauntings kind of things, but not really. Like the ghosts of her sisters are appearing and it's, it's pretty, it's pretty, messed up stuff. Like I actually, with this book felt like, oh my goodness, do I need to be reading this at night? Which I don't get that feeling very often. Um, but there's also some really weird stuff happening, like some uh, almost fantastical elements where they're able to step into another dimension, but, uh, but things aren't adding up just right for them whenever they come back. And it, it's a book that for me, felt like it had a lot of holes until it all came together and it made sense. It was a mystery that was both obvious, 
from the beginning, but also there were elements of it that just could not have been guessed, which sounds very contradictory, but whatever, I, that's, all I, that's how I can say it's spoiler free. It was a romance that was cheesy as all get out. Um, there were definitely things about this book that just that didn't quite work, but the things that worked worked so well that I still just loved it. So I'd say this is more of a low-key spooky book, um, a lot more focused on family, a lot more focused on environment, living by the sea, but there are scenes that are really cool. Didn't know why I could go there. I guess I'll keep on that track. We also have City of Ghosts, which is a middle grade. Uh, v.E. Schwab is an author that just, I've read several of her books and I just don't really think that she's the author for me, but I really enjoyed these books. Um, it's middle grade, so again, you're not gonna get like intense, intense horror, but it's this girl, her parents are ghost hunters, but they're bad at it, but she can see ghosts and her best friend is a ghost. So her parents travel all around the world looking for hauntings and trying to like prove ghosts exist, trying to uh, interact with them. And she's just along for the ride and also without telling them, sees ghosts all the time. <laughs> and this one, again, really wasn't very spooky. It had some spooky scenes, but if you're super sensitive to spooky stuff, but still want the spooky vibes in October, this is a great one for that. I think that it was well-written. I really liked our main character. I liked our best friend. There were definitely some scenes that were, uh, you know, in that vibe of, oh man, what's going on right now? But generally it was just like a nice, a nice story with some spook. And we're gonna end this list on a couple of classics, even though we've already talked about a couple of classics. But again, on, on the theme of not things that are not too, too spooky. I have Frankenstein, which uh, again, a lot of people say is boring, but I just, oh, I really, really, really liked, again, the conversations that were had in it. And I think that there were definitely some very clearly, I mean, it's more of a sci-fi book, I guess, but very, there's a reason it's it's considered horror. There are some definitely, there were some horror scenes, but um, I enjoyed the story itself and the conversations that were being had and then those scenes were just really brought it over the top. I don't think you need to tell me what, I don't think you need me to tell you what Frankenstein is about. And the final book on my list, again, this is very, very low key spooky. If you're not interested in spooky books is The Picture of Dorian Gray. So this follows a man who is very attractive and his friend, acquaintance, I don't remember how well they know each other, uh, decides to paint a portrait of him because he's so gorgeous. And uh, this portrait lives in his home and every time he looks at it, he just kind of gets more and more um, enamored with himself and also descends as a person and really changes and twists. And um, the progression of his character and his obsession with himself and with this portrait is a very, Again, slow story, but it's also so, so, so short that you're, it's like, it's still such a fast read. And for me, I found the unraveling of this character really interesting to read and the climax of the story, I just really, really loved. So it's another low key horror that you could read. So that's my list, five proper, unsettling, disturbing, what are we doing here kind of books. And then five that are more chill, you can pick what what section you like to, you wanna pick from. And then I'm also gonna to talk to you about, we'll make it five, I'll just, I'll just make it five. Five books that I plan to read in October, starting with more Junji Ito. I'm definitely going to be reading both of these in October. This is Censor, this is a, a, a town that's been uh, overtaken by tiny little hair-like things, just cords of something. And I don't know anything about it beyond that. And then, oh, this is his new release, what he just released this year, I think a couple months ago. And I don't know anything about this, but I wanna read it. Then I have The Ghost Tree, which is following a small town where people start going missing. And I think somebody starts having like really freaky visions that gives clues as to where these people are and why they're going missing. I love spooky small towns. If you can make it a spooky seaside small town, you win my heart, which is a big reason why I ended up really enjoying this one. But this is House, the House of Salt and Sorrows. That's the one. But anyway, spooky, small town, something weird is happening, but nobody's leaving. That's, oh, that's, that's my sweet spot for this type of story. So I'm definitely reading this in October. I'm really excited about it. And one of my friends has read it and said that he was sure that I would love it. 
Next book I have is The Drowning Woods, which is a book set in Wales following a girl who is, I think, the last, yeah, the last living water diviner. And so um, it's like this town that has been cursed or has been plagued by someone. And Mur, our main character, is tasked to go and kill the prince, I'm pretty sure. I tend to like to not know too much about books going in. But her task, her goal, is to go kill or destroy the magical well that keeps the prince's lands safe. So, I don't know, I really like water magic. I've mentioned that in a recent video, and since then I've gotten a couple of recommendations of books that are where the magic is based around water, controlling water, or protecting water, or that sort of thing. So there's been a couple of books that have cropped up in my interest, and I'm pretty sure that this book is supposed to be a little bit spooky and settling. I could be really wrong about that actually, but I plan on reading it in October. And the last book that I'm definitely planning on reading in October is The Fledgling, which is another vampire novel. And again, I've read several like classic, well-loved, I'm gonna be mad at you if you don't like this <laughs> vampire books, and I just tend to not love them. Um, but Octavia E. Butler is an author that I've read a few books by now, and each time I, I even if I don't love the book, she just she does things in such a different way than I'm used to seeing. And she usually has some really amazing conversations in her books, which is something that I just really, really like with what I read. And The Fledgling is a vampire novel. It's about, I think, a seven-year-old girl who realizes that she's actually an old vampire and her memories and her life have been stolen from her. So she starts uncovering that and also wrestling with the fact that she's not really human. Um, so I don't know. I just, if I'm gonna read a vampire book again, and I, when I've pretty much decided these aren't the books for me, I think Octavia E. Butler is my best shot at actually really, really loving it. So there you go. Five books that are proper spooky, weird, at least for me, they made me very unsettled. Five books that are more chill, and then five books that I plan to read this October. Hopefully in this video you have found something to pique your interest. They'll all be linked in the description. Let me know what your favorite horror books are so that I can have more stuff to check out. I post videos every Monday, Wednesday, Friday here, Tuesdays and Thursdays on the second channel. I'll see you again soon. Bye.